Coffee. I wish the drawers in my apartment opened this nicely. Just because it's fast doesn't mean it's better. I hear a little rumble in the jungle. Hi, it's Jess, and I am in desperate need of a new coffee maker. Luckily, I work at Good Housekeeping, so right around the corner is the Kitchen Appliance and Technologies Lab, where I can just pop in and ask Nicole what makes a great coffee maker. So let's head over. Nicole. Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry to bother you from your busy day of work, but I heard that you're testing coffee makers and I was wondering if maybe you could tell me a little bit more because I'm in the market. Well, we came at a really good time because we just wrapped up a brand new drip coffee maker test. Amazing. So when we test our coffee makers, there's a couple of things that we're looking for. We're looking for performance, but we're also looking for taste and ease of use is always really important mm -hmm. when we test anything. One of the things that we are testing is how fast does the coffee brew. Just because it's fast doesn't mean it's better. The two that I want to give you both made it to our list of best drip coffee makers. We have the Wolf that okay. has a bunch of bells and whistles. Love. And then you have your Black & Decker, which you've probably seen in a lot of households. Yes. And I think you'll really like this one too because it's very simple and I know you like things that aren't that frilly. And the way I would test them is first, make yourself a cup of coffee in each of them the way you would at home. Happily. Taste them, see how they are, see what you like. And then after that, brew a full pot of coffee and then we'll get the nitty gritty details like how hot is it and how quickly is it brewing, kind of similar to the way we test things in the lab. That sounds like so much fun and also my favorite activity, I get to drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so these are for me. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna go test them in the Innovation <laughs> Kitchen. Bye. <laughs> Before we caffeinate, make sure that you subscribe to GH and comment down below and tell us what else you want us to test. So this just looks like my very everyday, basic, no frills coffee maker. I feel like I know exactly what to do with this. You know, you just flip it up, put the little basket, water, push a button, done, it's good. This guy, a little intimidating, but probably great. So I see that there are all these different Program settings, clean. Well, that's cool. You can clean it. AccuBrew. I'm gonna have to learn more about this. Um, and then I think the the water reservoir is here. Where are you? Wait. That does something, but I don't know what. Is it this one? Oh. So we are gonna do three tests today. We're gonna do taste brew time, and temperature. We're gonna start with a taste test right now because I need some coffee. I see measurements inside here, but that's pretty handy. You can take the carafe out and then bring it over to the water and fill it up without having to like fill this guy up and then bring it over and spill all over your counter like I always do. Nicole advised that we use the same temperature water for consistency's sake for every test, so we just have room temperature water that we're gonna use to make this first pot of coffee. I'm gonna pour this in, and there's measurements on the inside, which is helpful, but also like kind of hard to see when I'm doing it the old-fashioned way, meaning, oh, that was way easier than I expected. <laughs> I wish the drawers in my apartment opened this nicely. Like, come on. Snug as a bug in a rug. Three, four. So we have it on AccuBrew. We have selected four, and I'm just gonna hit start. I hear a little rumble in the jungle. This already smells so good, but while this is brewing, I'm going to set up the Black & Decker so that we can do a side-by-side -side taste test. Hello! And I know exactly what I'm doing here. This is like the old school way. Every time I always fall on the counter when I do this. If you don't, you're some kind of superhero. Okay, coffee, four scoopies, done. And then just. Is it on? I heard the sizzle. I'm gonna let these brew and then we're gonna come back for a blind taste test. Okay, so they're both done brewing. They both have keep warm features. This guy gave me a little alert and has a countdown, or I guess a count up. It's been three minutes. Um, this guy just stopped gurgling and has a hot plate. Um, and I, there's a little green dot that tells me that it's still warm. I feel like I can already smell a difference. Wah. This guy is a little darker, I think. Um, and this one looks a little bit lighter. I don't want to say it, but this one smells a little burnt. So I'm going to close my eyes. We're going to scramble them around and then we're going to do a blind taste test black and then with milk. 
<laughs> All right, I gotta be honest, black coffee is not my thing, but Nicole told me that it's the best way to tell the difference, so I'm gonna do it. Yeah, that's black coffee. This one tastes more full-bodied than this one, for sure. I'm gonna add milk now, though. It's gonna be so much better. Round two, the delicious version. That's a good cup of coffee. Oh my god, I needed this so bad. Now I'm just having fun. Like noticeably waterier tasting than this one. Um, let me just double check that. Hang on. <laughs> a little bit less strong, a little bit less hot. So that is what I am noticing on these two. Okay, so I've just been told that the green is the wolf and the pink is the black and decker. I don't know what to do with this information. I guess I like the wolf one better for now. Okay, now we're gonna make them brace and then we have a thermometer for the resulting pot of coffee to see which one is actually hotter or colder. And I'm going to press start at the same time and we're gonna see which one finishes first. One thing to note is that this has a 10 cup capacity while this has a 12 cup capacity. So if the wolf finishes first, which I think it might, I'm going to check and see where we're at on the Black & Decker at that time. Three, two, one. Anyone have bets? It is kind of cool that I can see that this is brewing. I do appreciate the transparency there. This guy, I just have to assume that everything is happening and I want it to. Can I drink my coffee while we're moving? Wait, where is it? Six and a half, sorry, that caught me so off guard. This guy's done at 10 cups. Six and a half. When you need a cup of coffee fast in the morning, it's the wolf. While we wait for the Black & Decker to finish, I'm gonna take the temperature of the wolf pot and see how hot it brewed. Just finishing up, just being a little dramatic. Okay, 188 for the wolf. Both pots are done brewing. For the wolf, for a full pot of 10 cups, it took about seven and a half minutes. For the Black & Decker, for a full pot of 12 cups, it took 12 minutes. And for 10 cups in the Black & Decker, it took 10 minutes and 20 seconds. So the Wolf still has the Black & Decker beat by about three minutes for a 10 cup to 10 cup race, which is pretty impressive. Ooh, steamy. 182, okay, so I was wrong. <laughs> um, this is six degrees cooler than the Wolf at its highest temperature. So now that we've finished our tests on both of these coffee makers, we're gonna head back into the lab and pick Nicole's brain on both of the coffee makers, how they test in the lab, and find out the price on both of these. So I'm in the lab. Nicole, I have tested both the coffee makers. Awesome. And here's what I found. It definitely felt hotter when I was drinking the Black & Decker, but then when I measured the temperature, the Wolf was a lot hotter. Well, not a lot hotter, six degrees hotter. Right. Is that a lot hotter? It could be a lot hotter. Okay. So there's a lot of different things that go into these coffee makers and there's a lot of different things that go into coffee makers in general. So usually people do want a nice hot cup of coffee. The idea is Normal that it, people. I'm not judging. <laughs> like if you're making hot coffee, you want a hot, I'm like, I let it sit for like a good like 10 minutes right. and then I chug it. So that is actually part of all this science. So when coffee brews, and this is one thing that we're looking for when we're testing, mm -hmm. we want it to brew around 200 degrees. So okay. at that temperature, the coffee beans aren't scorching, but they are starting to brew. But by the time it gets into your cup, you actually want it to be around 180 degrees. And that's considered mm -hmm. the approximate optimal tasting temperature, okay. where your taste buds can actually taste it. And as it cools, some people actually can taste more flavor. Mm -hmm. So everyone is different. Some people really do like it to be scorching hot, but I'm actually the kind of person that I too like it to sit. I like mm -hmm. it to do its thing. My friends make fun of me for having it on my desk all day long, and I just really enjoy sipping on it. Like a nice room temperature coffee. Right. <laughs> in the same way. And this one in particular actually allows you to select the cup of coffee, how strong you want it, and then there's a built-in scale that tells you how much water to use to produce the optimal cup of coffee. Incredible. So it could be for your coffee aficionados, people who really love their coffee, people who really want things to be perfect to a science. Mm -hmm. So this actually has a thermal carafe, mm -hmm. which means you don't actually need a keep warm feature. And the way that differs is there's no hot plate on the bottom of a coffee machine that has a thermal carafe, oh. but there is a hot plate on the bottom of your glass carafe. So huh. some people, and it really depends on what you like and honestly what you're used to, what you grew up drinking, some people just want their coffee to brew right into the thermal carafe. It's mm -hmm. not gonna continue cooking. It's gonna be as fresh as when you first brewed it. Whereas on a 
heat warm feature, it'll continue making the coffee sometimes hotter. It really shouldn't, but it is part of choosing a glass and a thermal carafe. Super interesting because I actually thought that there was a keep warm feature on the thermal on carafe. This one. Okay. Because it had like the count up feature. Okay. Where it showed how long it's been since it brewed. Right. And that's actually a feature that I really like because if you live in a household with other people, you know how long the coffee's been sitting there. And the one draw, I would say, about thermal carafes, which I don't love because I don't love cleaning, you can't put them in the dishwasher. Uh, that will deal warp. Breaker. It, for me, it is. For me, too. And <laughs> another thing that I don't love about thermal carafes, but what's really great about this one, is it does have a wide opening, so you can easily put your hand in it, but sometimes the thermal carafes are more narrow, so it's hard yeah. to clean. Yeah, I've seen that. So a thermal carafe, is this like the thermos I had in middle school where my ramen noodles would be hot, like scorching hot until 3.30? Yes, it, that is how they're designed. It's the same insulated materials, usually double walled, because that's another test that we do. We see how long does it keep warm on the hot plate and mm -hmm. also in the craft, and this almost maintained the perfect temperature for the full two hours. It scored very high. Yeah, I mean, it was the perfect temperature when we poured it, and hotter than the glass craft, which was surprising, considering there's a hot plate beneath it. Right. Well, surprising and to me, not of... surprising <laughs> to the pro. And then one thing I remember when you were talking about your experience testing this is you said that this only makes 10 cups and this makes 12. Yeah. That's actually something that's really common with your thermal carafe and your glass carafe. Mm -hmm. Glass carafes can usually make more coffee mm. because the walls are thinner. Oh. And this is double walled, oh. so it's smaller. So our tests are usually for a max capacity. So we're doing a full carafe. And then from there, when we are testing to see how quickly it brews, we'll divide the time by the amount of cups of the carafe and see if it measures below that one minute mark that we were talking about. And I also know from experience and doing more testing with you that you like simple things better. And I'm going to guess that the Black & Decker is the flavor that you preferred. So I love that you were like, oh, you like things that are simple because I do. I'm a no frills kind of gal but I liked the Wolf substantially better, the flavor. I thought it was more bold and robust, and I felt like the Black & Decker one was still a good cup of coffee, but it was a little bit more light body, mm -hmm. a little more watery. Is yeah. that something that you would say? Is this... it, it could be, okay. and the beauty of coffee makers in general is that you can customize the process to make it how you like. That's true. So to get a stronger cup of coffee, you can add more coffee grounds. You can use less water. Um, some machines allow you to adjust the time like we spoke about. Mm -hmm. So if you want all those options, then definitely look for a coffee maker that allows you to adjust that all. Yeah. But if you want something basic, straightforward, entry level, you can just play around with it by adding your own amount of scoops and whatnot. Got it. So maybe if I would have added an extra scoop of coffee to the Black & Decker, I would mm -hmm. have gotten that full flavored taste that I like better. Sure. So tell me more about your favorite aspects of each of these coffee pots. So one thing that I love is on this wolf, you have this open drawer. I loved that. It's really good because a lot, most coffee countertops, this is also something that we consider, we want it to be under a certain height mm. so you don't constantly have That's to smart. move it out from under your countertop. So this makes it really easy. Some of the coffee machines that we tested actually come out, but I do like that this is attached because you're not getting coffee everywhere. The Black & Decker, it's shorter and it's easier, so it isn't riding above my countertop. So I don't necessarily have to pull it out because I can still reach in there. I also love that the water carafe, you could pull right out and bring over to your sink instead of having to fill up the coffee pot, yeah. bring it over and then spill water all over your yep. countertop, which is what I always do. <laughs> How much are each of these coffee makers? I need to know. So in general, you could get a really good drip coffee maker for around $100 and that could even range from 70, 80, maybe a little bit more than $100. So these two coffee makers, the Black & Decker, which makes this really good cup of coffee, is $30. And then the Wolf, with all its bells and whistles, it's really the tippy top of the drip coffee maker category, is $5.50. That is a huge discrepancy between the two. And there really is a coffee maker for everyone. We've tested over 100 coffee machines in the lab. We've tested this round alone, at least 15 new ones. So check out the link in the description and you can see what the top rated coffee makers are.